Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today we're going to be exploring Python types and logical operators. So as usual, I'm going to move you onto the screen and get started. Okay, so we've opened up PyCharm and we have an empty Python file here ready to start doing some coding. So the first thing that we're going to touch upon is Python types. So I'm just going to write that in here and say Python types. By types I mean things like booleans, which we've explored, strings, which we've also explored, integers, floats, things like that. So the first thing I'm going to say is print and we're going to say type and we have done this in the boolean video um, but we're just going to do it again hello world okay and then we're going to say print type let's pick a number let's say 13 then we're going to say print type 4.72 and then we're going to say print type true that could be false as well um, because if you've watched my video on booleans then you'll know that that is a boolean so we're just going to click run and we're going to see what what pops up okay so we have the first one is a string the second one is an integer 13 which um, is intuitive we, we know that that would be an integer this one here is a float so a float as, as can be seen here has a decimal in it um, and that's different to an integer because obviously this integer is 13 it's whole um, whereas if i was to put 13.0 and we were to run this there we go, we get that both of them are floats. So that's just a little bit of an insight into what a float is in, in Python. And again, finally, we have here that this is a bool. And that's what we touched upon in one of the previous videos. Okay, so we'll run that again. And we have these four different types. Okay, perfect. So now what we can do with these different types is we can actually say, let's take an integer, let's move it to a float. Let's take a float, move it to an integer. So we're just gonna explore that a little bit now and show you how you can change from different types by using some very nice commands in Python. So we're just gonna put here, moving to integers. Okay, so we're gonna start with integers. So the first thing we're gonna say is print. Okay, and we're gonna take, let's take what we had up above here, 4.72. And then we're going to ask Python to print int of 4.72. So as you probably have guessed, int will take whatever's in this input here and it will produce an integer. Okay, perfect. So let's also do something like print. Um, let's make it a little bit closer to 4, so 4.05. And again, let's say int 4.05. Okay. And let's just run this Python file. Okay, interesting. So what's happened here is it's printed the first two as we as we want, but notice that when it's taking the integer of whatever's been inputted into here, it will take this value here. It won't round up. So in maths, we are usually, you know, the, the way that it works is if something is about 4.5, we would then round up to 5. And if it's lower than 4.5, then we'll round down to 4. Python doesn't do that. Python will round down and that's just something to say and something I'm going to write on here is just saying Python rounds down and that's just something to remember. The way that we can overcome that is by using something called round and I'll show you that now. So we'll say print and we'll do the, the top one again. So we're just going to go down and say rounding up. Okay, so we'll take the first example again. We'll say 4.72. We'll say take the integer of 4.72 and then we're going to ask python to produce the integer of round 4.72 and what this does is it will literally round 4.72 up or down so we're going to click run there we go perfect so we have the 4.72 that we've inputted we've got the integer of 4.72 which again python rounds down so we have four and then we have the integer of the rounded 4.72 which is 5 perfect similarly if we were to just pop in here and say 4.12 i will move that back just for niceness but look we put 4.12 and python rounds down so this round command works up or down um it's just doing exactly what you ordinarily do in maths okay perfect so now we've kind of shown you how to move floats to integers in this sense so 4.72 and 4.04 which can be seen here are floats and that's how we can move a float to an integer as can be seen here now what we're going to do is we're going to extend it even further so you may think there's no way you can move a string like hello world into an integer there's absolutely no way and there is actually a way that you can do it but there's a very specific case for it to work so what we're going to say is we're going to just put moving strings to integers okay so the first thing we're going to say is print 
one, two, three, four, five, okay, and then let's ask Python to return the integer of one, two, three, four, five. So that is the string that we've inputted into here, okay, and let's run this. Look at that, perfect. But what you'll notice is they both look identically the same. So what is worth noting is if I was to say print the type of one, two, three, four, five, and then also print the type of the integer of one, two, three, four, five, okay. We're gonna run it, perfect. So the first one here, which is what we have here, is a string, and the second one here is an integer. That, seem, that may seem slightly intuitive to you because obviously we've asked it to print the type of one string and then print the type of an integer, um, but that's just a side note. So when I get rid of this and run again, you'll see here they both look the same, but they are in fact different because one is a string and one is an integer. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind. You may think, well, can I put hello world and move that to a integer? Okay, we'll see what happens. So let's say print hello world, and then let's say print the integer of hello world, okay. Ah, now I don't know if you saw that. Here we go, we had an error. So it says here, value error invalid literal for int with base 10 hello world. So what that is saying is hello world cannot be moved to an integer, um, it just simply can't. So that's just something to bear in mind is if we want to move strings to integers, they have to be numbers. So similarly, you know, you, you could put in here one, two, three, A, B, C, and one, two, three, A, B, C, and you may think, well, there's letters in there, it might work, and we'll run it, and again, a, a big error comes up. So that's just something to bear in mind, is you, you can't move um, strings to integers when there are letters involved, it has to be a string with numbers in it, specifically numbers. Perfect, so we've kind of explored how you can move things to integers, we're now gonna move on to moving things to floats. Okay, so moving to floats. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna say is print, and I apologize, there's quite a lot of printing in this, uh, in this tutorial, it's just to get you to understand Python types in a little bit more detail. Okay, so we're gonna say print float, and let's take a random number again, 18, okay. And we'll run this Python file here. Perfect, there we go. So now we have moved the integer 18 to 18.0, which is its float equivalent. And similarly, we can do the same as what we did before and say print the float of one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we'll run this and perfect, there we go. It comes up with the decimal at the end here. So one thing to mention is that with floats and integers, integers are really handy because being able to move from strings to integers, especially strings are really important when you have Excel sheets and data and you've got headings and you want to move the, the headings to, to actual um, integers or floats, it's really, really useful. So again, that's that's quite a brief overview of, of moving simply moving to floats. It's very similar to what we did above here. Um, now we're gonna show you a little bit more about strings. Now, I am going to be doing a tutorial on strings. That is going to be one of the next videos I release, and that's going to be showing you exactly how you can cut strings, how you can manipulate them, create new words from one word. It's going to be quite an in-depth video, um, so bear with me today. This is going to be simply just showing you types and how you can move from strings to floats and integers and such like that, but I will be doing a really quite in-depth video on strings later in this tutorial series, and it's going to be very soon as well. So next thing we're going to do is saying moving to strings. Okay, and I think this is probably one of the coolest ones. Um, if you find this cool, that is. I, I appreciate I always say that things look really cool and funky and and uh, you, you may not find them as funky as I do, but I think that's just what I get for being a little bit of a tech nerd. Anyway, so moving to strings. So we're going to say print and we're going to say uh, str. That's the string equivalent. Instead of putting string, you put str. I mean, str, um, an integer is int. So let's say print str or str 18 like we had before. And let's say let's print str of 19.5. Um, let's just go a bit strange. And then let's print the type of str 19.5. So you'll notice there are a lot of purple in here. And, and essentially what this is doing is it's saying print the type of this and obviously this we know is a string so you kind of pick up as you as you learn a little bit more about python you'll, you'll understand exactly what code is doing to start with i appreciate it can seem a little bit daunting and a little bit too much um but as you go through things will just pick up really easy so we're going to run this 
Okay, so we have 18, 19.5, and it tells us here that this is a string. So something to bear in mind is you, this pops up in Python and you think there are no quotation marks around it. Obviously, that's because strings don't put the quotation marks in when you go to uh, recall them in the terminal. You have to be very careful when doing anything in Python because this immediately to your eye looks like an integer and this here immediately looks like a float. However, they are strings because we've just created them as strings. And it says here, it is exactly a string. And similarly, if I was to put 18 in, in this one, this these two are strings. So that's just something to really bear in mind is being careful when things pop up and, and not immediately thinking, oh, that's an integer, oh, that's a float. You know, there is a possibility that it could be a string. Similarly with Booleans, um, I, you know, I'm not sure it's it's the same, but we could very easily say, here true and we'll run this and it comes up with true and you think that's boolean but actually it's a string because i've just popped it in there so that's just something to bear in mind um it won't be a massive you know bane of your life or anything like that okay so that's the first half of the video we have looked into what types are in python and how you can move from the different types it's just something that i find really really quite fascinating so we've done that we've looked into python types and i will be exploring strings um, in a video very soon so now we're going to move on to something that's not going to take long and it's called logical operators okay and this is just something that i think is worth noting um it's something kind of a little bit important for you to remember okay so we're going to get stuck in and start with logical operators so firstly what i'm going to say is and we're going to put this in hashtags there are three different logical operators and they are and or and not okay so these are the three different logical operators and i'm going to show you how they work in practice and it's just something really important to bear in mind because you can incorporate them in loops and i understand i've done a lot of videos explaining what loops are how you can do them in little mini projects so it's really important to just show you that these type of operators do exist so the first thing we're going to say is let's assign a variable x as usual let's say it's six and then we're going to say print x greater than zero okay so we haven't incorporated any logical operators just yet but i'm just going to show you what happens so we just click run okay perfect it tells us that that expression here is true which we know it is true and similarly if i was to say greater than seven it tells us it's false okay so we'll we'll stick back with zero and we're going to incorporate the and operator so let's say and x is less than 10. okay so what this is saying is print whether this is true or false whether x is greater than zero and x is less than 10. okay so you'll notice there is a little bit of a squiggle and that's simply because we can rewrite this in a nicer way but just to understand how these logical operators work i'm using a very very simple example to start with so similarly we could and this is you know you may have already seen this we can simply just write that okay and that's a lot neater than writing this but we're just going to show you how and works okay so again we're saying is this either true or false whether x is greater than zero and it is less than 10 okay so we'll click run okay and we know it's true perfect so let's say is x greater than zero and is x less than let's say five now i think you'll know what this will do perfect it says false we know that x is greater than zero however it is not also less than five so that's just a little bit of a way for you to understand how and works, how the operator and works. And similarly, we're going to say, let's take y equal to oh, 23, okay? And we're going to say print y mod 2 equals equals 0. Okay, now if you remember from two of my previous videos where we've touched upon this, this is essentially saying print whether y is divisible by 2. Okay, I'm going to talk through what this means again if you are a complete beginner. So this is a modular sign here and what this is saying is if y divided by 2 leaves the remainder 0, then it's true. And similarly, if, if that's not true, then it's false. So we're just testing whether this is true or not. Okay, whether it's divisible by 2. So again, we get false. Now we could say, okay, well, let's change this to 20, 24. Okay. And we'll click run. And perfect, it says it's true. Okay. Now we can add something in here and say, or y modulus 3 equals equals 0. So similarly to what we did here, similarly, this is saying, if, is, is y divisible by 2? Or is y divisible by 3? Okay, so we're going to run this. 
and perfect it says it's true because we know 24 is a multiple of two and it's also a multiple of three similarly i could put in here five and we can run this and it also tells us true because and you may think well, well 24 is not divisible by five what this is saying is it's saying either it's divisible by two or it's divisible by five so similarly if i was to change this to and like we did above and we click run it tells us it's false because both of these don't hold so and is basically saying both of the things must hold or is saying either of the things must hold okay perfect so that is just a little bit of an introduction into the and and or logical operators we're not going to touch upon the not logical operator today because you find that it's not something that you include too much in your beginner um, journey so we're not going to spend too much time on it i'm just showing you very basic logical operators and how they can be used in python but that is the video today we have touched upon how python types work how you can move between different python types and also a little bit about logical operators so as i said that is the video today i hope you enjoyed if you did then please like subscribe and comment and i will see you all in the next video